Hey guys, do you see this thing there? Yeah, this one. This thing is called Volcano Chaiten, and it made uh, quite a mess here like six years ago. I made a mistake. This wasn't the uh, Vulcan Titan. And uh, the one behind me is also not this one. I will find out which one, but I think it's this. This tiny one. No, oh, this one. This, yeah, this is a really small volcano. So finally, I, I found the Vulcan Titan. And I'm going up. It's pretty steep and it's pretty late. It's around 5 o'clock. At 7 o'clock it's going to be dark. They say, I mean they say, on the table at the down, no, at, the, at the bottom of the hill, there is an information that it takes three hours to go up and back. So it means 17 plus 3 is 8 p.m. so it's going to be dark. Well I can't walk in the dark because it's dangerous it doesn't seem I have a good luck now because my computer was stolen bicycle computer was stolen in Chaiten so I imagine Chaiten is not the best place for me so it's better I try not to take too much risks now Oh, I'm tired. Yeah, so I did it in uh, 45 minutes. I went up in 45 minutes. I'm nearby Volcan Triten. I'm still like 2.6 kilometers from Caldera. But if you look very close behind me, you can see the smoke going up from, uh, from volcano. And it really looks like a volcano. If you look closer, yeah, it is like a volcano. It was pretty steep to go up. I'm supposed to do everything in three hours, all the trip. I did half of it in 45 minutes going up. I think I can make it the uh, other way around in the same time. So I will be twice as fast, but I have to be careful not to, not to do any harm to myself. And then I still have to find a camping spot and I think it's um, pretty not the best idea to be so fast. Anyway, um, so Volcan, Volcano Chaiten erupted on uh, 2nd May of 2008. Uh, and um, so 2nd May 2008, by the way 2nd of the May is birthday of my brother, which is going to be soon or it was already already passed, I don't know when I'm going to publish this video but people when it started they were informed one day before by the scientists by the government that something is happening and then they were just evacuated from Chaiten to Chaiten is a small, very small town it's, it was like 7,000 around 7,000 people and now it's half of it People were evacuated very fast to Puerto Montt. It's a much bigger city north to Chaiten, but you have to take a ferry. So they were evacuated by the ferry to Puerto Montt. Some people from Chaiten, they didn't want to leave the city. Uh, in this story, it's also involved a person called, called Douglas Tompkins. It's a qu uh, quite famous person. Anyway, um, some people didn't want to leave, so they were just arrested by the police and then they were told to <sighs> arrest it and then they were just uh, forced to leave Chaiten. <sighs> in the moment when there was nobody in the, in the town, uh, there was only like uh, an army 
And the people I talked to Chaitan, they say that the army here, uh, Chilean army, uh, this is not confirmed. They were robbing shops in the town. And people were staying in Puerto Montt and government was paying them money from the kind of insurance because of this uh, situation. And they decided to come back in six months. After six months, they wanted some of the people wanted to come back. But the problem was that the government didn't want them to come back and it was saying that uh, they are not supposed to come back because it's dangerous and it's very risky. And now we have the person of Douglas Tompkins. He passed away four months ago. Uh, why is it important? Uh, Douglas Tompkins is a famous person from the United States. He created um, North Face company together with his friend, which he sold later to, to some other guy for $50,000. But it was, I think, in 70s or in 80s. He was first time here in Patagonia in 60s. Once he sold North Face company with his uh, wife, he created new company, Esprit. By the way, you don't, maybe you don't know, but uh, as Wikipedia is saying, that Douglas Tompkins is the person who, for the first time, created the tent without the middle pole, like this pole, but only with like two poles which are just bending, you know, like a like kind of an igloo tent. So he was the first person to do it. Um, he was also the outdoor guy, and he was also the pilot. That's why. Here in Patagonia, there is a lot of airports, uh, air strips in the national park. So, when he came here in the 90s, he decided to buy land and he created also Pumalin Park and he also created some other parks. But people in Chile, some people here in Chile, they didn't trust him and they were thinking that he's trying to make some business out of it. Especially that he, he bought quite a big land, big amount of land, it's like 800,000 acres. Acres? Acres? 8,100 hackers. So it's quite a lot. And they were thinking that he was going to be in another state or he's, I don't know, they didn't trust him. He was thinking that he's buying forest because he's trying to sell the green certificate to the company which polluted the air. Or he's trying to sell the land and later to the companies which are trying to um, build the hydro dams in Patagonia because there is some there are some plans to create the hydro dams. So people didn't really like him and he created a company here in Chile called Patagonia Sin Repression and it was about conservation and about not letting companies to create hydro dams. But then you have like a black PR for Douglas Tompkins which says Patagonia Sin Tompkins. So people think that in Chaitan, that the reason they were not allowed to come back to Chaitan was not because it was dangerous, but this is because Tompkins found an opportunity to to use the situation and buy the land because he is trying. He was trying to buy the land here in Chaitan to buy Chaitan and then connect. He has one part of Pumalini Park at the north and the other one at the south, so he wanted to connect them. So yeah people but after all people from the town they came back to Chaitan uh, they opened the case in Supreme Court and they won the case uh, they were allowed to stay in the place they lived before and the government wasn't able to force them there is a Colibur you can, yeah, I just saw Colibur uh, the small you know bird which is like able to stand in the earth that is kind of interesting yeah so people came back here to Chaitan and now they are living here but it still looks like kind of a ghost town. Uh, the, the girl I talked to in hostel, she said that at the beginning in 2009 or 2010, 2009, when there was like so many ashes in the town. It's like some buildings are still under ashes, like half of the building is, uh, is, um, is underground or under ashes. By the way, this is something which I found here in the volcano, there's a lot of it. It's some kind of a melted ro uh, rock. Um, I guess it's by the temperature. And it's a lot of also like uh, burned trees or like dry trees. Anyway, so houses were like under ashes and they also beach now in Chaitan. It's much bigger. I heard that it was like two meters from the street and now it's like 100 or 200 meters from the street and everything is like full of uh, dead trees and ashes. 
I mean, all this area is like full of ashes here. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, yeah, they came back after all, and the city now it's somehow living and um, still growing. Some people decided to leave to stay in Puerto Montt or uh, nearby Chiloé Island. Um, this is just on the other side of the of the bay, you can say, mm, which is supposed to be more safe because there is no volcano, but it's more rainy. Yeah, so this is the story of Chaitan. So Chaitan for me is famous for volcano and for people stealing bicycle computers. Hope you enjoy the story and uh, yeah, now I have to go back, find a camping spot, rest, eat something and tomorrow I have 25 kilometers to go to Caleta Gonzalez and take a ferry to the next place and I hope it's not going to rain. See you, bye bye and take care.